and form ratings. He's got selections for today and selections for the weekend. Tom Simmons trained his first winner at Hereford yesterday. Well done to him. A feature on him and his stable follows. See you soon. I've come to Herefordshire, to Dayson Court Stables, to meet probably the youngest national hunt trainer in the country. I'm not sure of that, but I'm pretty sure. Tom Simmons is the name. He was five years with Nicky Henderson, learnt an awful lot there, spent some time with James Fanshaw, used to ride out for Venetia Williams, who isn't far from here. So he's got a lot of experience behind him, despite being, being very young. And he's uh, set up on his own here in this splendid place. We're going to have a look around and I'm going to try and find him. I think he's out on the gallops at the moment. Getting everything together and getting the horses here. I mean, you've got old friends like Duke de Renier and Wogan's here, but assembling, as, assembling your team, you've got you know, 25 horses to start with, which is a nice number, isn't it, really? Yeah, I mean, it's something... Um, you've got a mixture. You've got horses that have never run before. Exactly. You've got to, the established handicap is the ones you really need. Yeah. Um, I remember Aidan O'Brien telling me early on, because we went to Paddy Doyle to visit, and he said, you know, really, when you first start, no one really forgives you a backward horse that needs time. They want to see it. You know, that's what they want. Um, whereas a more established trainer can get it, might not get away with it, but just give a horse a bit more time. But it's just having a steady hand. So the team we've got here, yes, they're going to take time fitness-wise, but hopefully with the handicap ones we can crack on. But the seven of the team was because uh, it was it was hard enough, but we were trying to also build the yard up or back to what it was. You know, regarding literally building up, concreting and you know building walls and putting stables back. Even not to load. I mean, you know, the buildings are fantastic. But John Edwards actually trained. He trained here. Yeah, he used it as a satellite yard. So Caradoc up on the hill there, you can see. That red house, that's Caradoc Court, where he, he that's a 90 box yard, it's huge, and it's very right. still a very well established equine um, so what happens there? place. And there's dressage and all right. that, and Pony Club camp goes on there. So it's not really, f I mean, the stables, a lot of them are empty. Um, but he then moved from Caradoc and still trained there, but lived at Dayson, which is where I live now, and he had his satellite yard there. So um, the yard was there. Um, but, but you've been planning this quite a long time because when you were working for Nikki, uh, you, I mean, you gave your notice a year before you yeah. actually left. So, yeah, so he, knew, a... he knew you were leaving. You knew you were coming here. So you've got, you've been over the last year. You've been getting everything ready. Ever since I was at prep school, I've been thinking about what I could do with the place and how I'd change it and what I like to put, you know. But actually doing it, and putting it into into action, is was a challenge and that's what I quite enjoy because it's when you get. We were left. I was left it by um, a relative, and I'm trying to honour their, you know opportunity they've offered me and yeah. try and use it to my best ability. But you've always wanted to be a trainer, that's what mm. you've always wanted to be. Yeah, I mean, it's also got to find the niche for the place you have, you know, you know, you make the best of what you've got and I've been very, very incredibly lucky to be left that. Um, but the fact that I trained, I don't, it's like fate or something, but it, it kind of is because it's a racehorse yard and that's what it is now. And now you've got to go and do it. Mm, basically. The so staff, what have you got? How many? Have you got, got seven there? staff, um, head lad Mark White. Um, well, he's very experienced, isn't he? Yeah, so he did David Nicholson for 14 odd years. Um, he actually, when he first came here, produced Rel Keel's head collar. I said, God, I hope one day <laughs> we have one that can wear that with pride and not yeah. sort of, yeah. Because um, you need a bit of experience, don't you? Yeah, being at Nicky's Yard, you see the team is everything. I mean, Corky is like the lin you know, linchpin. Everyone says it enough, but you can't really say enough about someone in, a, in any industry that works for someone that long and does it to that ability. I mean, amazing bloke. But the leap from going from being assistant trainer you know, in an enormous yard like Nicky Henderson's to suddenly being here on your own. It, it is quite a jump, isn't it? Yep, it is. Um, I don't say I want for pressure, but I sort of, I didn't put on myself a lot at Nicky's because of course he deals with it, he's the helm, you know. But I made a lot of the problems my problems, so I wanted to get them right as well. We're all there for one thing, you know, training winners really. And, um, getting the best out of the horses and keeping them in one piece. You know, Corky's job is to keep the horses in the best health so Nicky can train them, basically. But your responsibilities are completely different because there you're yeah. part of a team and you're doing your little job here. You're, you know, you're sitting in the chair. You're, it's mm. your responsibility. I mean, yeah, I'm, the, I'm like in the summer, you spend a lot of time going to studs and looking at horses and seeing people and meeting people and networking and talking um, some sense or not. And that's, people like to, you know, if you show interest in their horse, they might show interest in your yard, you know. So it is different. Um, there's a point where your delegation has to be done because, of course, you can't be trying to do everything. You think you're a good delegator? I'm getting better at it. Um, 
he always says you want a job done to do it yourself properly, and that is. But, I mean, Mark is, you know, second to... I mean, he's got, as you say, the knowledge of lots... I mean, more, well, more knowledge than I've got in that respect. We're sort of winging it a little bit, learning about the facilities and everything, so, you know, it's a learning curve. But Big that, learning curve. It always yeah. must... I mean, there must mm -hmm. be always a sort of a settling-in period, getting to know the gallops and everything like mm -hmm. that. And it's yeah, must of course be there is, yeah. But quite exciting when you've... You know, there's no one, it's a clean sheet, isn't it? Yeah, blank canvas, yeah. And like you say, we've got to learn all about the facilities, um, you know, and working out a routine. But know. working for a big yard, like, you know, when he was with Nicky Henderson, you were with the Duke, David Nicholson, yeah. mm -hmm. you're going to have good times. And then you have these, you know, inevitably you're going to have rough times as well. You've just got to sort yeah. of, you know, mm -hmm. weather the storm. Is that well, part of the game? Ca character building, yeah, certainly. That's an old cliche, isn't it? But yeah. um, that's what it's all about. I mean, he's got a sort of temper the enthusiasm a little bit to, from time to time and we've got to sort of make our own way in it you know is that what you love about the game when things you know the the, the great feeling of when when things go right it must be very satisfying oh, of course it is yeah it's it's especially in a situation like this from the from the beginning you're going to watch it develop and see how things come along so uh, you know we'll, we'll hopefully learn about the place together and you know you know if we get a bit of success then it'll be all all the more welcome you know <laughs> We were talking earlier about buying horses. Oh, it's a different. It's, a, it's, it's like it's a, well, it's a job in itself. I mean, you've look got at the agent. Pretty, yeah. I mean, do you leave that to other people, or do you? Sometimes it's, it's about. It's, that's part of the team. though. you have a buying team. I mean, look at Richard Hannon and Peter Doyle. That team yeah. is unbelievable. They spend. But Richard Hannon does a lot of that himself. With, with Peter, it? but it's a team. This is that's yeah. something. It's, it's part of their because team. Because you need to bounce off the. Uh, you think. Yeah. I mean, I, is I, what I'm seeing right, and you've mm. got to try and. You I went to Keenan or... with James Delahook one year. And that was a real eye opener. I mean, you're going through thousands and thousands of yearlings, um, and um, finding also you're that going one through horse very, is very quickly. Um, yeah, you can blink and miss one. I've been one. to the, the, the High Clare uh, mm. Open Day, and John Warren, who does a brilliant job, and he was saying when he's when they're buying horses, you've got to you've got to put your judgment to the test very, very quickly. quickly. You're yeah. looking at horses. You know, it's not you're not spending hours looking at them. But sometimes some of the best stock judges, cattle and horses, say never, never question your first thought. If that's what it is, that's what yes. it is. If it's wrong, in the, if it's back of the knee, it is. You know, don't go, don't go, it might be or it isn't. And do you think you've got quite a good sort of eye for what you think is... I'll on? let you know. Because <laughs> I, I do a lot of it. David and Hannah, Dave Redvers and Hannah Wall, his assistant, we... Um, David's obviously very busy with Sheikh Fahd Al Thani and Kipco, and he's doing a great job yeah. with that. It's, I mean, you got to you share your opinions, as you say. You bounce off them. You say, "Is it? Does, what's your yes. judgment?" And David, very much like me, had a farm at home and has transformed it into a stud, Tween Hills, as it is now. I think he saw a bit of himself in me, a young person trying to start off, and he was being very helpful with me, and it's been great. And he's a person who I take a lot of advice from, and so um, yeah, I do try. And it's finding horses is a job in itself, and that's why all summer Nicky used to go off, and that's what he does going to find okay. more horses and he never stopped because as soon as you stop right. your next season could be it's never ending yeah it never it? never like, ending and it really is never ending because i mean you i mean sometimes your set of novices coming through won't be as strong as the established stars you had so therefore you'll have a season where you're not going to be winning the money you should to be up where you are so yeah buying horses is you, it's, you keep finding them all the time all the time and it's a non-stop job which is as I say why Nicky works so hard to keep going to look at these horses see them in France see them in Ireland see them in Northern Ireland Southern Ireland and in England and whatever and try and find the next horse to yeah. fill that slot and people are still willing to pay you still get these horses that have won one Irish yeah and they, and they win and it's amazing you said because people whinge about prize money and there people are still spending a lot of money to buy a horse that's going to go and win a novice hurdle worth spend, two grand you can still but, you know, I know what you pay for a, for a winner of an Irish point to point, but it's uh, you can pay, uh, you know, an awful lot, lot of, of money, money yeah. six figure sum, yeah, easily, can't you? Oh yes, definitely. I mean, some people don't. Have you got any Irish any point to point? <laughs> no, horses um, that have come from you know from winning. Point you can to watch point. DVDs and you can see how far it wins by or whatever, and then know you know, obviously. Is it different? The point? Why is it so? Because we don't. Here? We, it's a different kind of academy over here. We have a lot of. Uh, Retired, well, former established stars over here that go point to pointing for their daughters or sons to ride. Because over there, it's their business. They start at four, or, you know, jumping, and and that's when they make their make their money. You know, mm. like Finney's Rainbow started at point to point in Ireland. Burton Port was the same. Mossley the same. Um, horses like that that then come on through over here. 
and do well. And nothing ever gets unnoticed. There's always someone watching. And, 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 and there's always an edge else. to it. You know, the horse pulled up, but it probably was. You know, it doesn't. They don't want to show their hand or something. Or you know, and there's when always you something. You get phone calls saying, "I've seen a really nice horse that you ought to yeah. have a look at." And the first You'll thing, get that the whole time. The point, point to point in Ireland. Yeah, I've had, well, I don't get it all the time, but I've had it. And they say, "Have you got an owner of this horse?" And I'm going, "Right, it's point to point." And you start hearing telephone number costs. And yeah, there are. But I mean, it's a. It's funny because it's. That market still holds up very strongly compared to France. Still, I think I think it does very well to do that, and it still does to this day. I mean, I said Paul Nichols goes to Ireland. I think a lot to watch point to points um, over there. Has France become too expensive now? Then, do you I'm think? not saying that. I'm, I'm obviously Anthony Bromley and um, they still go and, to and David Powell still strive every. You know, they go and they they know exactly where horses are, and they keep an eye on them. They follow yeah. them and stuff like to get. As you heard the story about when they got masterminded, they had to keep trying to get that horse. But it's about knowing your market and where I'm trying to s seek out the next star. Mm. And it takes a lot of hard work. I mean, yeah. They work very hard to do that and it comes off more often than not. Yeah. I mean, I remember the, what was it, the Champion Hurdle when Binocular won. They bought the first three home that year. I mean, Kyber Kim, uh, they bought early on in, you know, with a yearling, I think. Binocular, obviously, from France. And Punjabi, they bought from the horse in training sale for 40,000 or something. Punjabi's a, you know, classic example of a horse where he wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea to look at or buy, but he's just got the attitude to die for and loves jumping and is just the, most, the toughest horse I think I know because he's just While incredible. you were at Nicky Henderson, which horse sort of surprised you most, how well he did, but you thought, well, maybe, you know, but, 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 but really sort of reached the top? Burton Paul probably was one of them because he came in and he wasn't really, he wouldn't be any big outstanding specimen to look at. And of course, he very nearly won the Sun Lions chase and he kept progressing all the way through. And we ran him a lot. I mean, I think he ran six times and won five and he was second diamond Harry in the brush hurdle in his first start before he went chasing. But he just kept progressing. He's so tough. And he's, uh, he wasn't easiest to ride at home. He could be quite keen and silly, but he was immensely tough. And then, you know, just, and then he went to Aintree after the Sun Lions and won there as an amazing horse. Duc de Renier at the last, steadied into this, allowed to just pop it in his own style. It wasn't flamboyant, but it was safe enough. And Duc de Renier is clear of Nicola and Victoria's groom as they come onto the run in now. Duc de Renier, Mitt Fitzgerald, allowing this horse simply to coast home. Where's the Duke then? The joke is I sleep there and he sleeps there, so it's like a Lady Givings loves that. <laughs> And does he, oh, he must mean a lot to you, mustn't he? Yeah, Brothers I mean, bringing an old as I say, you were saying about a horse surprising me. This one, I suppose, is because he doesn't show you an awful lot at home. He is... Um, there he is. A beautiful horse. You can go and look at him. So he lives um, in here on his own. He, yes, yeah, so I used to ride him a lot at Nicky's. And he's one of those horses, as I say to you, doesn't really show you an awful lot um, on the gallops, but turns it on the race course. I mean, he's the horse when he... Didn't he win? I mean, it was so impressive when he won at Newbury. Yeah. Mick rode him. Mick Fitzgerald rode him, and that was his. How many how many runs did he had in England at that stage? None. He was going to run. That was his first run in England. Yeah. So he was going to run at Fakenham with Jamie Snowden on an amateur's hurdle because the Gibbingses live at Kings Lynn near Fakenham, obviously. And that was frosted off because it was bad weather at the time. So he put him into a, what was a well-established novice hurdle, not like a graded race or anything, but just you know good horses go there. And he started at eight to one, which is unusual for a Nicky to do that at Newbury. And he beat Asana by eight lengths on the bridle. And it was we were, really, really, I remember we were all, watching We were all on, absolutely, we were just gobsmacked. Yeah. I mean, they'd had Izio before the Givings is, and this horse, we couldn't make him out because he's a bit of a playboy as well at home. And as I say, Did he run wise, at Cheltenham that year? Yeah, so then he went, ran again at Kempton in another novice hurdle, and then he won there, and then he went to the Sun Alliance, and it was all just too much for him, really. The Sun Alliance hurdle, or the whatever, I think it was still the Sun Alliance. Yeah. Then. Um, so that was the end of that, and then he went chasing. And he got beaten by a Starzan in a two-horse race at Wincanton one day. And I don't think he was right because things didn't go that way for him. But he did win a novice chase, which was kind of annoying because if he hadn't, you'd have been better off. But then he came out the next year having the Gibbings had done a lot of work to get him right because they care immensely about the horses. And it's all about, obviously, the health of the horse, which it, it should be. Yeah. And they gave him the time and it was rewarded the next year because he came back to run it into, well, gradu graduation chases and hurdles and things. and. You know, just got beat in the Lanzarote on a top weight by Michael Flips. Um, second to Punches Towns in the Long Walk. Um, he's listening. And he's listening. everything. And we yeah, we did it together because he's. A, I mean, I I, do, we, I think I get on quite well with this horse in some ways. I mean, it's going to be difficult to win a race this year with him in terms of placing because he's so highly rated. He's 150 races over fences and hurdles. And he's nine 53 now. 53 or 54. He's nine. Yeah, so he becomes a veteran after Christmas, so he could go to veterans chases. Well, that might be good. So it opens up a new avenue in that respect. But um, 
he's a very athletic horse. And do you think there is still good races? I to hope be so. And the him? change of scenery might lend itself well. But I just, I mean, as when I used to ride him at Nicky's, I used to drive people max. I used to let him get away with Blue Murder. But you try and rule him or rule a horse like a, you know, a baby who's just fresh, then I think it makes them go the wrong way. I mean, so I let him go. After Newbury win, there was so much potential there. Do you think he, he's been you know, a bit of a disappointment? No, 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 no not, not at all. Not, not at, at all. Because he, no, because he's won just shy of 200,000. Um, yeah, not, this. not at all. No, because he won at Cheltenham the, uh, in the Grade Two Force. It's Chase in the end, beating like um, Void Paul Eustadies then, who probably on the wane as he was. Yeah. But he still, you know, jumped round because. When John Franken was one of the first people to ever score him over a fence at Nicky's, he said, he said, this is one of the most naturally talented chasers I've ridden for a long time, because he's so athletic, but if he just, his head's got to be right. And well, that's obviously... sort of what I meant, but, you know, maybe he was expected. And well, he just, he's, he could physically, he's the not the most robust looking, no. that's the thing. He's quite narrow, and his back can be, have issues, so we've just got to keep on top of him yeah. in that respect. But, no, he's, he's a... Real, he's so a real character. So he'll be fun to have here, won't he? Oh, to have a horse of this colour, yeah. I mean, your foot is unbelievable. Oh, it'll be great to see him. So when do you think, when will he be ready to run, do you think? Um, um, when? As he did get injured, well, I say injured, he has a wear and tear last year, so slowly, slowly does it, but maybe Newbury at the Hennessy meeting. But oh, we'll as soon see. as that? Well, yeah, but if that doesn't happen, not, yeah. a, not a problem. No. But that's a race, because, of course, yeah. he maps his own, you can't go... 150 rated horse, they map their own program slightly. You've got to find the right race. And those veterans chases, they're a great idea, aren't they? I think. Yeah, then they are. It's a bit like the graduation chase in that respect. The same yeah. with the vet, because it opens up with, like, with him. A very talented chaser, not over raced either, um, as he is. And um, he does actually look like, he does go quite fast. Not that he looks like he does now because he's half asleep, but. Um, and, yeah. do you, and are you going to relish the, the challenge of pouring through the. You know the various races. Yeah, I, I, I sadly, I, I, it's nice to have like horses with ratings and stuff to be able to look at a race. You know, I could look at that race there, not aim too high and try and just progressively find a niche for them. You know, that's that's quite fun. I quite enjoy well, that. That's yeah. part, I mean, that's apart from getting horses fit and getting the right horses, finding the right race for your horses is a is absolutely vital, isn't it? Yeah, placing and everything. Yeah, yeah it's a massive part of it, and um, it's just. But then, it all, as I said, you have to have the horse to be able to do that with. How many, have you got any sort of established handicappers that you've got, Wogan you've got, who's, who's obviously yeah, Wogan, we know and then about. Prince Buster and Radu is blurred, there's two that have come from Alan King, um, run over hurdles, yeah. got ratings, um, obviously. But you need those sort of horses, don't yeah, you? Yeah, they're the ones that are going to, yeah. you know, I'm not saying they run on Saturdays or anything like that, but these more established horses take a bit more work and they just and take you to, you know, races not saying worth more money and stuff or anything, but you know, this horse can go to, might go to Newbury on the Hennessy Day and that'd be amazing to go with a horse to do that. I mean, just to be at the races that day with a runner. Yeah, well we know it's been a lifelong passion because in fact, you, when you, one of your earliest TV appearances was when your school, St Richard's School, wasn't it, sponsored mm. a race at Hereford. Yeah. And then the old, the dear old racing channel was there and I was the, the Muggins reporter. Thomas Simmons is the toast of Hereford. You named that, what sort of price was that, Thomas? I'm not that quite sure, but I just thought it sort of looked quite good in its other races it had. I thought it might move up from fifth to third, so I thought it looked quite good. There are demands coming in from all over the world that you give us the Derby winner, the Oaks winner, winners tomorrow, but you, you won't turn into a professional tipster, I hope. No, I don't think so. My dad wouldn't be too happy about that. You were racing mad even then. It's weird, because it's 14th of May. 14th of May this year, I left seven barrows. So, really? So yeah. it's a significant day. So it certainly is. So, yeah. It was actually the 14th of May I went to my interview at Nicky's because it was the same really? weekend as the lock in Do you remember? Because Soviet Song was running the lock in and I drove up to Berkshire to see Nicky. And of course, it was raining, and Soviet Song wouldn't like it that well, soft. You are. So, I think we um, have, have to buy a horse and call it the 14th of May. But yes, I've always, I've always been. Have you been subjected to seeing that that video? A few times, times yeah. And I, I think just, we ran off a copy for your mum, and and. I was always, I, I was always, I was always regarded as the child at school that had verbal diarrhoea. And as I said, sponsored sizes has occurred a lot. Um, and I, or loquacious, I got called a lot of names. I got called a lot of names, um, but. Um, Oh, but talking even was then, never. you were. I mean, this was. This is really what you. What you. I mean, you've always wanted to do this. Yeah, long time. And when I when I was at school, I was at Worth Abbey then in Sussex, all boys Catholic school. And you know they weren't really trying to um, create anyone into a racehorse trainer. You know, you do your Myers Briggs test or your. You go to your careers advisors and see what you want to do. You can't go to a classroom and learn how to train a horse. The best thing to do is practically learning and earn while you learn. But it's so exciting because there you are. So you're on that sort of. You know, you're on that ladder now. 
one of the youngest trainers in the country. Um, when we're trying to encourage sort of a more youthful image of mm. racing anyway, I mean, do you feel, do you find at school there were, were lots of, of, of uh, are there young people who are keen on racing? They are, but of course, a lot of the time with them, the first thing that involves around them is betting, you know. Yeah. Could I back the horse? Uh, were, you a, were you a no? A betting never well? interested me really? really. No, never. Never. I was always. I was very lucky. Obviously, I had this massive um, advantage that I had. It was allowed to have horses and ponies at a young age at I school. You say this massive Yankee came up or something. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. But I, I had the I had advantage. I had the love of horses, whereas some people don't have. They had the love of racing and gambling, yeah. um, which is. I mean, gambling makes Nothing racing go round. Gambling, sadly, no, it's yeah. the way it is. Absolutely. I mean, you know, without that, we wouldn't be. You know, let's not no. get on to the... But it's not your... It's no, not, your not my... Objective. And I never really I never really had a bet at Nicky's either. I don't really do it. It doesn't... Because, you know, it can all look so easy when you have all these horses going into a race course and then you look like an idiot when they get beat. But no, it's great, as you say, the young people... Like my, sis, my sister's at Dublin and Jack Cantillon and um, crew run that young racing um, sort of society. And then, obviously, Sam, Koskin, Sam Hoskins over here with Hot to Trot and then... Michael Spence, it was great to see him the other day on Morning Line. Yeah, massively, young yeah, people no, we need to... Yeah, we spoke to him as well, and, and, and trying to get more, yeah. you know, young people. Because, I mean, you're, you'd be in quite a good position to, to, to sort of, you know, to fly the flag in a way. To yeah, we're both, what is it, I, I, I've left the Titanic and got my own lifeboat on a <laughs> big open sea on my own. Always nice to see a name for the future, and here is a horse called Merific, owned by Michael Buckley. Yeah, well, firstly, having well, having Michael is massive um, boost for me. How many in terms of he got with you? One, just one. him. This is him. Th so this horse was at Nikki's, um, came to Nikki's as a three-year-old, four-year-old maybe, and then fractured a hind pedal bone. Gave him the year. Or he needed a long time for that. And then gave him a year. And then last year he was never really right in his back, so gave him another year. And then Michael said, "Look, I'd like to support you because we've always gotten very well." Um, so he said, I'll give you a, if, if, I mean, this can, if this can stay in one piece and retain his ability, he could be very good. It's a big if, but we'll but do our, we're doing our best. What's his racing history so far? So he's run four times on the flat in France. Um, and never, I, mean, I think he's ever at the first four. He's basically running listed races on the flat for cricket head Marek. And then her and her family bred him. And Michael then bought him. Um, so, you know, wind back two years, and this one, when I remember, never forget, we thought he was our proper top novice hurdler, and that's at Seven Barrett. So, to imagine to have a horse of that calibre yeah. that might be able to do it here is unbelievable. So, he's taken time to. to yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing I'd everything. say is that he has come back looking a lot bigger and stronger, so maybe he was just too weak there to deal with it. So, hopefully, he might take it better this year. But he touched wood going well. Well, time off can be a blessing, can't it? Yeah. I mean, you've got to hope that everything still fits in. Like, he used to yeah. jump very well at Nicky's as well when we schooled him. And we got him so close to run last year. Um, and uh, so hopefully, and finally, Cat, who used to look after him at Nikki's, has come here as well. She now knows him, and she knows Michael very well. And she used to look after Spirit's son and Oscar Whiskey, actually. So she knows a thing or two about a good horse. Well, it seems like it's all, you know, it's it, it's great to come down here when it's at its, you know. I'm at I'm at my most interesting. I always think because of, of this to some embryonic people, stage. Because yeah. um, of course it can only go very very wrong or very very well. And either way, people won't want to talk to you in the future about yeah. it if you well, do. Well, I think we have no danger about you talking, which is quite good. <laughs> That's true. We're worried yeah. about we worried about people. But it's, it's it's been great looking around. All we can do is just wish you all the best of luck, and we'll be watching. Well, we'll be watching frame by frame your your progress. Mm, yeah. Mm. Uh, sink or swim. Let, hopefully, I swim. Good or luck. Float. Good luck. Thank you very much. At the heart of the 